Now to Jeffrey Epstein, where many of you know in 2007, he was busted for sex trafficking. And that quietly went away, he got out of prison, and then it seems like he started a couple of new companies, one of which actually targeted young children in the Virgin Islands, specifically. Whitney Webb is the investigative journalist who's been covering this story, and I want to deep dive this with her today on the show. Whitney, welcome back to the show. Hey, great to be here. So this is a crazy story because... So we, we know about the sex trafficking in 2007. Then after he gets out, he turns his attention to the U.S. Virgin Islands and starts a new company, which I don't think many Americans have any idea about this part of the story. And we're just now starting to learn more and more about this. Can you take us through sort of the high level first and then we'll dive into the nitty gritty, disgusting details? Sure. So the, the company you're talking about here is called Southern Trust, and he had a few other companies tied up with it, including a bank um, that were based in the Virgin Islands after he was arrested for sex trafficking in Palm Beach. And so after that happened, he seemed, like you said, to have directed his attention more to the Virgin Islands. And so this company in, in particular, Southern Trust, was created in 2012. And it describes itself as offering cutting edge consulting services and uh, as a DNA data mining firm uh, that was uh, trying to find clients specifically among big banks and big pharma. It described itself as sort of a biomedical Google that was trying to uh, use people's genetic sequencing to determine what drugs would work best on them and all sorts of uh, odd things and even people in in the testimony that he gave to this Eco economic development commission in the virgin islands were uh you know very awestruck i guess you could say by how you know unusual uh, the company was was framed as being and what its objectives essentially were and what's uh, particularly important is that in a lawsuit um, that was filed by Denise George, who is the same attorney general of the Virgin Islands that was fired after filing the Epstein J.P. Morgan case, she had another case targeting Epstein a few years prior. Um, that lawsuit and also a lawsuit filed by the New York Times referred to Southern Trust as being a key part of Jeffrey Epstein's criminal activities. But as I said earlier, it was founded in 2012. So this is well after he was busted for sex trafficking the first time, and it was not a part of what he was charged with in 2019. So it seems like the Virgin Islands was really the only entity interested in going after him uh, for this particular company, which, uh, as, as we've mentioned, was based there. So what's interesting is if you look at the testimony, it doesn't explicitly talk about children, but in his testimony to this commission, he says what he wants to do is essentially uh, engage children early on to train them in programming and to run these artificial intelligence servers that are going to power um, these algorithms. And so the way he apparently did that was by uh, f funding a slew of initiatives uh, targeting youth in the Virgin Islands, specifically mentally ill youth uh, and underprivileged and poor children. And a lot of the um, those activities are eerily similar to the same ways that he recruited minors, underage girls uh, in the United States, targeting underprivileged, economically underprivileged uh, teenage girls and uh, gifted children in, in music and the arts. And uh, there's been <laughs> no uh, interest really in looking into this story among mainstream media because why would someone, a, a known pedophile, uh, be engaged in this type of activity? And we know now from the recent Wall Street Journal revelations that uh, banks, prominent banks like the Edmund de Rothschild Group, uh, was giving Southern Trust millions and millions of dollars in contracts, um, and it's it's just a very um, disturbing and overlooked story, and might shed some light on why the U.S. Virgin Islands, unlike a lot of uh, um, you know uh, jurisdictions in the U.S., are interested in going after a lot of the powerful people that enabled Epstein, particularly billionaires and some of these big banks. It's crazy. It's truly disturbing. I mean, absolutely disturbing. It sounds like something out of a, like, you know, the, like a Bond villain. Like if you were to write this as part of a movie, people would say, no, this is ridiculous. You're going to have a billionaire is going to go to the Virgin Islands. He's going to seek out children in order to do biomedical research, implanting things in their brains. Yeah. And even in his testimony, I've gone through these documents that you've sent over, it, you know, he talks about autistic children specifically. I think like a, a quarter of them were autistic as well. And 
Um, and did looking any of the for parents kids on the spectrum? Yeah. 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 So looking specifically for kids on the spectrum, did you get any insights into why he was doing that? Um, I think maybe what he was looking for were, you know, um, I, th I think people are probably familiar with the sort of savant characteristics of some autistic people. And mm -hmm. he may have been looking for um, uh, children and teens that sort of had those um, unusual abilities. Uh, but it's definitely very disturbing. And something he talks about in his testimony, this Virgin Island Commission, is um, the idea of how he uh, aggressively wants to genetically sequence the islander population because it's uh, such an isolated community, and then talks about how uh, those gene, um, that genetic information can be used to determine how to educate these children that he wants to recruit to ostensibly work for his company in coding and, and programming. But again, as I mentioned earlier, he's targeting specifically underprivileged children. Um, which is, is very disturbing in light of the similarities uh, between that and what he was doing uh, as part of his sex trafficking operation with Ghislaine Maxwell. So there's there's the Epstein piece of this, of course, but then there's, you know, he wasn't operating in a vacuum. You mentioned some of the associations that he's had with the different banks and the funding and, and sort of thing. But where do these tentacles lead? Um, we know that the Virgin Islands has been struggling to subpoena uh, Larry Page, Google's Larry Page, um, as part of the Epstein lawsuit. You've written extensively about J.P. Morgan Chase, of course, and Jamie Dimon putting up money, making sure that they were funding. So do we know specifically about this Southern Trust, like what other people were actively involved in it. You mentioned the Rothschilds, but anybody else, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, I saw those names, of course, popping up again in the testimony. Um, so the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, um, I didn't see pop up in this testimony specifically, but it does pop up in some of his uh, s um, simultaneous efforts to finance education, not just in the Virgin Islands, but in the United Sorry, States. Sorry, yeah, let me, let me, yeah, let me clarify. It wasn't in the testimony, but it was as part of this education process yeah. in the Virgin Islands. Yes. Yeah. So he was specifically trying to target um, a lot of the same areas that Bill Gates's philanthropy hits, not just science, but also education, and a lot of these old press releases uh, refer to Epstein as a prominent education patron and, and things of that nature. And, you know, in some of my past work, I was able to show that back in 1998, he was going to places like Russia, uh, looking at high schools, visiting high schools and apparently elementary schools looking for kids that were talented in, in science and math. Uh, and some of these pictures of him in these in these Russian classrooms, the only kid that's there looks like he's eight or nine. He's just a single kid alone with Epstein and some of these other scientists that he was close to in the room. And, you know, what it really disturbs Creepy. me that no one is has, you know, really bothered to look at this or, or scrutinize this in, in any capacity. And um, as far as far as Google and like Larry Page and Sergey Brin, so both of the Google co-founders are being subpoenaed by the U.S. Virgin Islands in, in connection with their investigations into Epstein. Larry Page is apparently so concerned about being served papers that he can't be found. Uh, they're trying to go through Alphabet, Google's parent company, because he's still on the board of Alphabet to try and get access to him that way, but he really does not want to have to uh, testify in this case, and that should be really telling. And in the context of Southern Trust, uh, what, as I mentioned earlier, this was a company based around data mining. So what's particularly odd is that in New Albany, Ohio, the New Albany company, which Epstein created on Leslie Wexner's behalf, was a partner in and invested money into, uh, is the owner of the land on which a massive Google data center sits. Uh, did Southern Trust have access hmm. to that information? What was going on there? Uh, there hasn't been a lot of scrutiny into that either. And it seems like, you know, knowing that we, uh, what we know, for example, about Sergey Brin being a regular visitor to Epstein's townhouse and all of this other stuff, um, it's certainly uh, looking quite disturbing, especially when you consider that Google as a company has had intelligence connections from its inception and throughout its, its existence as, as a company. And you even have people like Julian Assange uh, pointing out that Google is not what it seems and is essentially operating as its own intelligence agency and as a front for Hillary Clinton's State Department at the time that he he wrote that um, wrote wrote a right. book. Was it five hundred million that they took they took from the CIA um, and of course and the back end infrastructure of course of of Google intimately tied to the intelligence community in the United States. Right, and at the same time, Epstein and also Leslie Wexner. Uh, 
have their intelligence ties and, and ties also to, to criminal activity that I, I covered extensively in my book. So why are these actors coming together and what's going on? What was going on with this data mining firm targeting children um, and what was and genetic information of people in the U.S. Virgin Islands and, and all of this stuff in the Google data center? I mean, there, there's a lot of unanswered questions here, um, but <laughs> I mean, considering what's coming out, it definitely seems increasingly disturbing. And another thing that I well, found I, really tell. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, no, go, please, please. I don't want to, another thing that you found telling, I don't well, want to interrupt I, that. Yeah, well, I was just <laughs> going to say that in, in the testimony, uh, there's a particular reference Epstein makes to Africa. And he says, I do a lot of work in Africa. And he refers to Africa as fertile ground for experimentation. And so it turns out that Epstein was a major funder of this weird um, artificial intelligence uh, lab and, uh, being created in Ethiopia that's tied to the scientist who's overtly transhumanist that he funded extensively named Benjamin Gertzel. Uh, Gertzel is, uh, for example, head of Humanity Plus, formerly the World Transhumanist Association, uh, which is an entity that Epstein funded in addition to funding Gertzel's own work. And Gertzel is also the chief scientist at Hanson Robotics, which has produced uh, these human-like robots, the best well-known probably being Sophia, uh, the robot that was, for example, granted citizenship by Mohammed bin Salman at a time when one of his close advisors was Jeffrey Epstein. Um, again, very, very odd activity there. So as, as far as what's going, what was going on in Ethiopia, at the time um, that Epstein was investing in this AI lab, and uh, back in Gertzel, uh, Gertzel was teaming up with this uh, blockchain company called Cardano uh, that's pretty well known in the cryptocurrency space. And um, they were specifically seeking to offer digital ID. Well, it's already happened. They gave a digital ID essentially to uh, 5 million Ethiopian school children with the intention of expanding that. And the whole intention of this is to harvest data from these children. They explicitly say that. So, uh, and, and even in other documents, uh, Kurt, Gertzel essentially says that this data is being used to feed, you know, uh, the AI that powers robots like Sophia at Hanson Robotics and stuff. So what exactly is going on here and what are these transhumanists uh, up to and why are they so overtly interested in children? And what was Jeffrey Epstein, who was interested in children in, in numerous disturbing ways, interested in doing? Um, you know, I think this is something that needs to be scrutinized because it seems like Epstein was a, a child predator in multiple senses. Do you think that we'll get answers from this lawsuit? What's specifically happening in the in the U.S. Virgin Islands? Because I'm, I have a couple of questions about this, like the, the families. Right. It seems like he was targeting underprivileged families, children specifically um, going to Africa. Very easy to kind of hide what you're up to because we're not going to hear about it. It's not like he's it's in uh, in Georgetown in Washington, D.C., where he's doing these experiments. Um, right. And so then the families, maybe they're paid off. Maybe they're quiet. Have we heard from any of the families of these children who've come forward and part of this investigation? Or are they kind of quiet? No, I don't think any any of them have really come forward. But if they're, you know, it, it would be hard to imagine a way for them to do so. Uh, as one example, as part of the sex trafficking operation, Epstein and Jean-Luc Brunel were alleged to have paid off poor parents in France so uh, in order for Epstein to sexually abuse their young children on his birthday. Um, and even despite that being a public story and being in court documents, that family has never come forward to testify. And when, you know, these people, you know, if they're specifically underprivileged, poor, or these are, uh, and some of these uh, things, uh, efforts he was targeting or, or creating in the Virgin Islands, they targeted abused children, orphan children, juvenile offenders. Uh, a lot of those children may not have parents. So again, th uh, th this is highly disturbing. And, you know, uh, this whole digital ID thing, uh, it seems to me to be targeting, again, vulnerable populations. If you look at initiatives like ID2020, for example, which is very much tied up with Bill Gates, uh, they piloted a lot of their stuff overtly with a, um, a charity that's been accused of uh, child abuse and child sexual assault uh, was used to uh, pilot in a digital ID program for stateless people in Southeast Asia. And it was framed as voluntary, but if these stateless people wanted to access uh, food, 
uh, or medical care through this charity, they had to participate in this digital ID program and, and surrender their biometric uh, information and be part of this experiment. And this same type of uh, effort is what Cardano and these guys, Ben Gertzel, have been behind in Ethiopia because it's all about, uh, they say it pretty openly, it's about tying a digital ID to a digital wallet and creating uh, basically a surveillance apparatus where these children's performances in schools and what they do in their lives is tracked and that data is saved and they're using it to feed artificial intelligence algorithms, most likely without their consent. Because if this is required at all Ethiopian schools, uh, children and their parents have to choose between their children getting an education or being part of this program and having their data given to these uh, obviously predatory people. So uh, again, I find this incredibly disturbing. I think more people should uh, know about it because we're seeing this whole system uh, being tested on vulnerable populations. But at the end of the day, the intention is to have all children and all people on this kind of system, on this digital ID surveillance grid tied to your digital wallet that all holds like a CBDC and have your whole, um, you know, everything tracked. And Epstein was trying to get ahead of this over a decade ago with his company, Southern Trust, and have, you know, your genetic data tied to your education, uh, tied to your finances. I mean, why was he trying to do bio, you know, uh, medicine and financial stuff together? I mean, there's all this weird, uh, weird stuff. And when you consider today, a lot of these same avenues of scientific, uh, scientific, um, well, I don't even really know what to call it, uh, essentially creating this, this smart grid. Um, you have uh, an entity that I've written about previously called Welcome Leap, which was um, uh, the Welcome Trust trying to create a DARPA equivalent and then bringing the head of DARPA during the Obama administration, Regina Dugan, uh, who used to run Google's DARPA equivalent to run that. Um, that particular entity has a program that's trying to map baby brains and children's brains by, by subjecting children as young as three months of age to eye tracking technology um, and different invasive types of uh, surveillance, wearables, all of this weird stuff to try and figure out how to develop what they call an in silico model of a child's brain, uh, basically trying to make uh, artificial intelligence that's just like a, a child's brain, uh, ostensibly to create the singularity or something like that. You know, Ben Gertzel, who I referred to earlier, is obsessed with that. And uh, we can assume that Epstein probably was too, since he funded this guy so heavily. You know, he created Singularity Net and he works for Singularity University and all of this stuff. Um, and I should note that the guy that created Welcome Leap, Jeremy Farrar, is now the chief scientist of the World Health Organization, uh, which has a, an a huge role in uh, deciding what medical interventions uh, should be performed on, on children or offered to children around the world. You know, this is really stuff that we should be looking into. And the Epstein connection yeah. is important because it makes it very explicit, the predatory nature of the people that are trying to push this through. You know, uh, we're seeing... Uh, Promote, promotions of the idea that AI is going to replace everyone's job, but there's this, you know, they're using children, children in school to try and, and create, you know, artificial intelligence stuff that will uh, essentially be as intelligent as a regular human and, and have that kind of consciousness. I mean, that's essentially what they're trying to regulate, uh, uh, to replicate, and they're, they're using uh, children to do so. I mean, it, it's highly disturbing. Um, yeah, you know, I'm afraid <laughs> unless we focus on it, I mean, no one really else is covering this, you know, so for us to be able to shed light on this, get this message out there about this, hopefully other journalists, other, you know, maybe large media companies will actually do stories on this and, and try to look into this more, you know, more deeply. And then hopefully they'll be investigated uh, by actual on the, you know, in the legal process of this. I'll get you out of here on this, which is Southern Trust after Jeffrey Epstein uh, is killed in prison. What then happens to this data and the people sort of involved in this? Does it just disappear or is it mysteriously gobbled up by the likes of Google or other places? Like, where does that go? Yeah, unfortunately, we don't have a lot of visibility in that because some of the representatives of Epstein's uh, companies, including the ones based in the Virgin Islands, had been caught lying. So there was a bank that was connected to Southern Trust, and that bank, his lawyers claimed, was inactive but somehow a bunch of money was sent from Epstein's estate to that supposedly inactive bank after he died. 
millions of dollars what? so there's we yeah so there's weird and that was in the new york times so there's weird stuff going on uh, with all of these companies um and uh, frankly <laughs> you would um, think that would be easy to track who pushed the button on that transfer you right? would Isn't think that it would trackable be easy by... to track, right? Yeah. Why won't the NSA or any of these other intelligence agencies that can surveil us to the most minute detail have any of this information? Um, you know, it, again, I think a lot of these people have, wow. have something to hide, especially when you consider that some of the known, really the only known client of this bank being the Edmund de Rothschild group, which was, you know, historically tied to entities like Perm Index, which have been, you know, it, it, tied to the Kennedy assassination and stuff like that. I mean, it, these are powerful people uh, that know a lot of people probably don't want to mess with, but if they're targeting, uh, you know, children in, in developed countries while at the same time claiming like they care about the global South and the developing world and creating this disturbing transhumanist, neo-colonialist paradigm. And I mean, essentially Epstein, Epstein was recruiting kids to work in a coding sweatshop uh, from schools and stuff in the Virgin Islands. And, you know, we're only allowed to talk about his his sex trafficking crimes in Palm Beach from 2000 to 2006, as far as mainstream media is concerned. There is a lot more going on here. And the fact that he was guiding the philanthropic activity, for example, of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, which does a huge amount of work in Africa as well, and also in the same uh, edu education space that's aimed at, you know, making uh, remote learning, permanent teleeducation, uh, wearables and education. Uh, you know, these are all things that are still going on uh, even after Epstein's gone. You know, this is just a microcosm into a larger group of people who are masquerading as philanthropists, but really they're building a digital prison and they're piloting it out right now on vulnerable kids, mainly black kids in, in Africa and the Caribbean. Well, you blow my mind once again. Um, this is astonishing stuff. Hopefully we can get the message out about this and more people can start to shed light on this story and we can pull further on this thread. Whitney Webb, great to see you. Thank you so much for this work as usual. Um, and we will continue to follow this story. Thank you so much. Thank you. And that's really the most disturbing part of this is the children, <clears throat> you know, the children that are that are silenced, the parents that are silenced or paid off that can't come forward and talk about this or yeah. who we don't even know who they are uh, because there's not some investigatory body looking for these people, looking for these children. Like, can somebody dive into these documents and track and find out where these families are and who was what sort of medical experiments were done on these people and, and what is actually still happening in the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation? What are the Gateses doing? With all of this, I love what Pulsar I, Pulsar Echo in our chat says. Sounds far worse than the story we already knew. Yeah, exactly. This is way worse than what we already knew about his trafficking. Yeah. Go ahead, uh, Philip or David. I couldn't hear who I, I was. That was me. I was going to say, I bet Melinda absolutely hates having her name tied to this because of how much she hated Epstein. Everybody's like Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Mm -hmm. They need to just say Bill Gates because she had wanted nothing to do with that. Obviously. Well, perhaps. I know we've talked about that. Did yeah. she? And I know yeah. that Whitney Webb certainly has some thoughts as to whether or not how, you know, it's it's convenient now to be able to, plus a divorce and Jeffrey Epstein being killed in prison and Ghislaine Maxwell being uh, silenced in, in prison or whatever in her country club. Um, it's convenient now for her to be able to say, I met him one time and he made my skin crawl. Yeah. Yet your husband went there 46 times and this is the, it really, really, really? It's convenient. It's certainly convenient. And actually, the, Whitney the Webb, in my last interview my with her, she... actually a few months ago, Whitney Webb said on our show, there's more about Melinda Gates in this that we haven't heard. Okay. Philip, go ahead. Yeah. What blows my mind about this is that, that all of the names being named that are still out there, known and not investigated, and no one ever will. You know, you've got these, yeah. these like high profile people, and it, it, they're, not, they're not being secretive. We know where they are. We know what they're doing. They know we know their ties to it, but yet they'll never be investigated. Yeah. yeah. And that just, that just infuriates me. Thank you so much for watching this segment here at Redacted. We are live every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time trying to share the stories that the mainstream media will not cover. You should also come over and join our community of Redacted Rebels over at redacted.inc. That's our private locals community where we can share exclusive content that we simply cannot share here on YouTube. Come over and join the rebellion together right now by going to redacted.inc. We'll see you next time.